I said, go ahead and feel free to put any questions you have in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to this month's Answers from an Actuary. My name is Brianna Nesbitt. I am super happy to be joined by my two colleagues, Trisha and Marta, today. And I am just going to turn it over to them and they can introduce themselves and we will go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. I am Marta Jimenez Lauder, and I am the manager for candidate engagement, candidate and student engagement at the Society of Actuaries. I've been with the Society of Actuaries for the last 10 years, and I love my job. I always say I have my dream job because I get to deal with people that are working on their dreams and working very hard and people that are very smart and very motivated. So that's that's me in a nutshell. Trisha. Hi, I am Trisha Novielli, Candidate Engagement Specialist. I have been with the SOA a little over 16 years and um, been in this role, my current role for the last three. And I absolutely love working with candidates and students. It is just, yes, yeah, so refreshing. And I love all the new ideas and things that um, our new candidates and students have. It's great, great to be here. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, I know that y'all have some things that you would like to share. Marta, let me know if you're able to share your screen. I know we just tried this, but let's hope it's gonna work. <laughs> yes, it would not be a live event if we didn't have some glitches. So here we go. I, I am going to do a very casual presentation for you. I don't have slides or anything like that. What I'm going to do is going to give you a tour of the affiliate membership page and all the resources and all the things that we've put together to help you on your actuarial journey. But first, let me give you a little bit of a background as to what the affiliate membership is. We um, we established, we launched the affiliate membership in 2021, in October of 2021, with the goal of making um, getting the making people more comfortable and making sure people understand better what an actuary does. The thing is that when you go and you Google what is an actuary, the um, the description that you will get is very vague and very technical. And there are so many different types of actuaries out there. It's kind of like saying a doctor is somebody that cures people. Well, there's doctors that do research, there's doctors that do surgery, and then within the regular doctors that cure people, there's also the doctors that do you know, your nose and throat or your gynecologist, your uh, dermatologist. So the same thing kind of applies to actuaries. Actuaries do a lot of different things. Yes, they manage risk, but they manage risk in a lot of different ways and in a lot of different industries, from startups to the insurance industry, to any, any company in any industry that manages risk, which pretty much is everything. So we wanted to put out there that knowledge and we've created um, a membership where you have all the tools that will help you get to know a little better what an actuary is and what an actuary does and hopefully will inspire you to become an actuary. So without further ado, let me share my screen and I am going to give you a little tour of our affiliate membership. Hold on, let's see. If... Okay, can you see my screen? Perfect. Okay, so this is the affiliate membership. To be able to view this page, you first have to go to the Society of Actuaries page, click on Feature Actuaries, go to Affiliate Membership, and sign up. It is very easy and it is free. So all the benefits that I'm going to show you right now, they're all free for you. They're all included in your free membership. So once you are a member, you get to this page and it gives you some, a little bit of an overview of the benefits that we have. So we have education and it will tell you a little bit of you know, what is this, the, the Society of Actuaries exam pathway? Where did you start? Uh, you can also take practice exams to see what the exams look like. You have, you can then register for an exam and there, but there's also all kinds of different tools and not only for students, but also for teachers and counselors. We have this influencer kit that Brianna Nesbitt put together and it helps teachers 
um, explain and teach in their classrooms what an actuary does. It's a very easy to use and very useful tool. We have on-demand courses, and then we have a free RStudio sandbox. What this is, is you can go in there and play around with RStudio and learn how to use it. Or if you already know how to use it, you can practice and get better at it. There are very um, easy to follow instructions of how to get started. And it is and one of the programming languages that are very useful to know if you are going to become an actuary. Another thing we have is on-demand courses. These are courses on a variety of topics that we think are going to be very useful for anybody going through the actuarial pathway. Um, sorry, it's taking a little bit to load. Here we go. So we have anything from how to build up your resume or your CV. Uh, we have some in Spanish, some in French. And then we recently added some new classes. We are constantly updating this, by the way, but we recently up, uh, added some classes, uh, including fundamentals of a statistics, introduction to calculus, data analysis basics, for those that might want to brush up a little bit on their math classes. And then because we are very um, in the area, in the era of AI, we added two AI specific courses. One is AI chatbots, what they are and best practices. And the other is how do I use chat GPT? I'm going to say this several times and you're going to get sick of me, but this is all free and it's all included in your membership um, and your free affiliate membership. If you go to events and networking, we have a job center where you can find jobs. We have a mentorship program that Trisha is going to talk to you about because she is the person behind the, the scenes um, with this program. It is phenomenal. And I encourage all of you to definitely sign up for a mentorship pro for the mentorship program. We also have events like this, for example. This is for open for everybody. You don't have to be an affiliate, but we also have something similar to this called Lunch and Learn. Our Lunch and Learn is going to be about the future of AI in actuarial science. Again, this is free. You just have to sign up for the affiliate membership and then you just register. And it's, a, it's gonna be an hour, May 31st on Friday. You can also attend SOA meetings uh, in person. And this is a great opportunity for you to meet and interact with practicing actuaries, employers, and SOA staff. They are free. No, I'm sorry. These are not free. But because you are an affiliate member, you will get a discount on this. They are very affordable and they are definitely worth your time. Uh, we also have a digital library with videos that explain what is an actuary, what does an actuary do? How much does an actuary make? How hard is it to get through the exam uh, pathway? And a variety of, um, of topics. So that if you don't want to read about it, you can definitely watch videos about it. So um, I'm not going to show you the library. I'm going to let you peruse through it. But it is definitely full of information and anything from a minute video to 25 minutes to an hour. So this is in a nutshell, what the uh, the affiliate membership is. And because I said before, I'm gonna let Trisha talk to you a little bit about what the mentorship program is because having a mentor is a great way to get your career started and to make sure that you can progress through the exam pathway because it's sometimes a little uh, challenging and a mentor can definitely help you overcome some of those hurdles. So without further ado, Trisha. Okay. Let me stop sharing my, <clears throat> hold on. Let me stop sharing. There we go. Did you want me to share my screen or were you gonna share it on your end, Marta? Okay, we are having a little bit of a... Tr mm -mm -mm. So while we get that up, we do have one question, folks. Go ahead and put um, questions in the Q&A box. I know we just got a lot of information thrown at us from Marta. Thank you so much. Um, I also <laughs> want to uh, give a caveat before I answer this next question that none of the three of us are actuaries. We are all staff members at the Society of Actuaries. I think we did say that, but more folks did come in um, after. So the question that we have, and I think any of us can take a crack at this. I can even answer if y'all want. Um, how many exams do you recommend we get done with while in school? Does anyone want it? Again, Go I'm happy. Go for it, Brianna. Okay. You obviously, so, yeah, you're ready. 
So we recommend, you know, whatever y'all are comfortable with. And as you move through the pathway, the pathway is meant to be very customizable to you. So if you want to take exams while you're in school, that is absolutely, you know, up to you. And you can do that in a lot of schools, particularly those on our UCAP, which is University and Colleges with Actuarial Programs list. A lot of those schools have classes that teach to the exam specifically. Um, but some folks don't take any exams while they're in college. I have a really good friend who's an actuary and she didn't take her first exam until she was a year out of college. So that is a very standard answer I know. And it's very, it's not super helpful maybe, but whatever is the pace for you, um, the pace that works for you is the pace that we want you to take. Okay. And we also have people that are not in college and are coming from another profession. So they don't take it. They don't even take exams until they're, they have practice a different profession. We have people coming from math and from other STEM fields. Um, so yeah, like Rihanna said, it, it's up to you. It's your, it's your journey and every journey is different. Uh, Trisha, I am able to share your the, the screen, so I'm going to go ahead and share your presentation, and then we are going to get to all of your questions. Uh, please let me know if it's working correctly. There we go. Awesome. Thanks, Marta. So hi, everyone. I am Trisha Novielli, again, the Canon Engagement Specialist, and I'm here to talk to you about MentorLink. So what we're going to talk about today is who qualifies and how to join MentorLink? Who are mentors and how to choose the right one for me? The length of mentorship connections and where are the meetings held? So in MentorLink, it is accessible, it's accessible to all affiliate members. And as we said, it's free and um, you can choose, choose to participate in the MentorLink program at any time. Um, and if you have any issues with the platform or if you have any questions, you can always feel free to um, contact myself or email mentorlink at soa.org. Who are the mentors and how to choose the right one for me? So mentors are our SOA members who have obtained an ASA or FSA designation, and they volunteer to take part in mentoring aspiring actuaries. They have profiles within the platform that give you information such as their name, location, hobbies, gender, work experience, and areas of expertise. There are currently 347 active mentors in 32 different countries worldwide. So the length of the mentor, mentor connections, we have two options. The first one being it's a three month mentoring connection where monthly meetings are scheduled and goals may be set up with the help of your mentor. We've also had requests to extend the, the connection beyond three months, which may be done in the platform or feel free to continue communicating on your own. The option two is the flash mentor. This is more for like those one-off questions. Example, I am a career changer and I'm interested in the actuarial science. How did you decide to become an actuary? Or we've also had some ask how to go about gaining an internship. And last but not least, here we go. Where are the meetings held? So through the MentorLink platform, you may schedule meetings and choose to connect via email, phone, Skype, Teams, it's really up to you and which you have access to and which you feel most comfortable. Um, and yeah, that's really it. That's MentorLink. I, we've got great feedback from it. We've heard lots of um, our affiliates take advantage of it and really find success uh, with their mentor. Thank you so much, is, Trisha. Yeah, that is great. And um, as Trisha said, it is a great benefit. It is so useful and you can pick whomever works for you. That's the good thing that, Trisha, can you tell them a little bit about um, how that pairing of the mentor and the mentee goes? How, when you, how does a mentee get into the website and pick a mentor? What are some sure, so what happens is after you 
after you sign up and if you're already an affiliate, you already have access to it. But if you're not an affiliate and you're choosing to join affiliate membership, there's a 24 hour waiting period once you join. After that, you have access to go into, uh, so you'll find it from our benefits page. You'll click on mentor link and you could go in there and really just browse around in and filter it by, would you prefer, um, you know, male or female? Are you somewhere in, in China and you'd rather be working with someone on your own time zone? You could go ahead and search by country to see if there's someone in your area. If there's, you know, you find that you have, you crochet and you see somebody in, that has a hobby that crochets and you're like, okay, there's something, somebody I feel comfortable with. Um, or, you know, you play some sort of sport or some sort of hobby. It's somebody you you can go through and there's a list. And if you choose one and they're not available, you know, give them a couple of days because they are working um, professionals. So they may not, you know, get back to you right away. Give them a couple of days. And if for some reason you're still not hearing back, feel free to choose and go find another mentor that's open to mentoring. And yes. yes. And like I said, you'll go in there and with the help of your mentor schedule, you know, with the three month connection, schedule meetings and schedule some sort of goals um, it just all depends on what you feel you need. Thank you so much for that background. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tricia. Sure. All right. We've got lots of questions in here, some of which are related to the men uh, mentor link in the affiliate membership and some of which are not. So let's go ahead and get into them. So this one um, is someone is a senior in college and they would like to start a career as an actuary. They plan to join an MBA program after college. Is that a good way to go? I can also answer these questions if anyone else, I know I've been reading them longer probably because I've been sitting here. Um, uh, I, you, yes, um, you are welcome to answer that one. All right, awesome. So um, not a name attached to this one. So planning and uh, joining an MBA program or graduate school after you complete um, your undergraduate degree. So advice that I've heard from um, U.S. college professors on this is that grad school is recommended for folks who are new to the United States. So folks who got their undergraduate degrees elsewhere in the world, then moved to the United States for work or for school, that um, oftentimes those will be the folks who get a degree, like an advanced degree in actuarial science. An MBA is a little bit different. An MBA obviously is more business. It's all business, not just focus on the math and finance side of things. I don't, it's not a bad idea. It's also not necessarily, it's not necessary. So one of the great things about the actuarial profession is that you don't need to have a higher degree. You can just get your bachelor's. And then with our credentialing process through the exam pathway, that's how you earn your credentials. So that higher um, level schooling is not needed. Um, if you want to, feel free to, and I'll put my email address in the chat, feel free to send me an email if you'd like to, me to get you connected with someone else who can better answer this. Okay, let me put my, I can only do one thing at a time, so let me type this first. <laughs> and just to reiterate what Brianna just said about um, not needing a, an advanced degree, the one of the... I think huge benefit of of, actu of becoming a credential SOA actuary is that you don't need to get a master's or a PhD. You need to get through the exam pathway. So, and a lot of times, once you get one or two exams under your belt, you can get hired and your employer will pay for your exams. So when you're finished and you get that ASA or that FSA, you don't have a huge, huge student loans to pay off. So we think that in this day and age, that is a huge advantage. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Marta. What am I doing? I'm typing. I'm I'm on the next question already is where I'm at in my head right now. <laughs> so thank you, Marta. Of okay, the, the next question from Wisdom, are there any special scholarships for the exam? So I'm going to put two links in the chat. This first one is on our brand new actuary, so actuarial support program. And this is um, a joint effort between the Society of Actuaries and the Casualty Actuarial Society, or CAS. And you can read all about the um, qualifications on the page, but this is a reimbursement program for both exams and for study materials. So that's gonna be your best bet. Um, 
for any support from the SOA. The second link are, or the second link ha is a page to a lot of different scholarships. And I'm just looking at these. These are anywhere from identity based to geographic based. There's some for folks specifically living in Nebraska. There's one for some, for actuaries in Nebraska. So a whole lot of different options on that page. I mean, there are at least 20 options on this page for different scholarships that exist. Um, I hope that answers your question. Okay, next question. Where's the link for the mentoring program? I put that in here and I will put it again, but Trisha, did you wanna tell us again how to access that? So you have to be an affiliate member in order to access MentorLink. So you won't be able to get to the affiliate benefits unless you are an affiliate member. And like Brianna said, if you are an affiliate, you go under the benefits page and it's under networking and events. And I'm getting that in here one more time. This chat's just going to be a bunch of links. <laughs> I apologize in advance. Helpful links. <laughs> Helpful links, yes. Um. Okay. So next question. I was recently laid off from a non-actuarial job. Would option one work better from actively applying for jobs? Um. You. This is an anonymous question. Would you mind coming back in and letting us know what you mean by option one? I'm not sure what that means. And then we will hopefully be able to answer that. I'm wondering if it's option one of mentor link, where it was that if you have just like a one-off oh. um, question and sure. Yeah. I mean, you can go and ask numerous one-off questions. So if you just have a, a one-off question, you want to use the flash mentor and you, you get your answer. And then you think of something else later, you can go ahead and, and use that again. Okay. So they said yes for mentor link. Did that answer your question? What Trisha just said? friend I almost just said folks that was one person also you can like Trisha said you can ask several questions but also you can start by asking a question and then if you think that you would like um, a longer mentorship relationship and um, as, as you transition and go through the process of getting that first exam under your belt you can do that too there's no there's no limit that you can only do one or the other or one mentor per year or anything. You can just do as many as you want. Folks, I see two people have their hands raised. I don't believe we have the functionality to allow people to come off of the mic. So if you could either go in the Q&A box, and I think my we have Zoom workplace now. It looks different than regular Zoom. But for me, the Q&A box is right next. To, well, I'm, it's going to look different. It's going to be by well, I don't know, because this is a webinar, not a meeting. So the Q&A box is on the bottom of the screen. Um, I'm not sure how else to describe where it is. Otherwise, you can put your question in the chat. Everyone should be able to chat. Okay, next question. Is this webinar going to be available online? Yes, it will be. And as an affiliate member, you can access the recording. And it's going to be on that digital library that Marta showed um, and you can access that through your benefits as well. But I will put the link up here. Um, if you are an affiliate member already, so you can just get straight to it. Let's see. And, it, and in that digital library, you can also access other answers from an actuary that Brianna has done over the years, over the years, actually. And uh, Lunch and Learns, and as I said, short videos of different actuaries explaining what they do, um, and, and a lot of different um, resources. So... Don't be afraid to explore because there's a lot of content in there. All right. Thank you, Marta. Okay. The next question is, do the scholarship support study materials and do they support international students? So the, the actuarial exam, I already forgot the name of it because it's brand new. The actual actuarial exam support program is only for folks in the United States and Canada. So you have to be in North America, but that second link that I put of all the scholarships, those are wide, far and wide reaching. Like I said, there's one for people who live in a certain state. Um, those are all over. Those are also, a lot of those are sponsored by our affinity partners. So identity-based. So for folks who are, um, well, I can't speak for women or for folks who are of a minoritized um, uh, race or ethnicity. 
for folks who are low income, for folks who are first generation students. So I would encourage you to just look through that page. And again, send me an email if you're not finding exactly what you're looking for and I can get you connected to the right person. Okay. Is it heard of for actuaries to work in consulting or to work independently similar to a CPA? Would one of you like to take that one? That it, it depends on what you want to do. Uh, in the digital library, you are going to find some, uh, there is a couple of short videos uh, with consulting actuaries talking about what they do. So I think that would be very useful for anybody who wants to explore that avenue because as I said, it it all depends on what you want to do and what appeals to you at a professional level. But there's a couple of videos and I would highly recommend that you check them out because it will answer it will give you a personal perspective on what a consultant actually does. Advice on which exam to start with? Well, I I think that any of us can answer that. Um, there really isn't a an only way to start, but most people tend to start with uh, P or FM. But again, you can start with FM, you can start with P, or you can start whatever you want, as long as you get all the exams done in a, you know, in, in, a, in a, a specific, um, as long as you get the exams done that you need to for the credential. Thank you, Marta. Okay. Some if, any of, if either of you have a better answer to that, please jump in. Yeah, no, I would say if you're, you know, stronger and probability and take probability first and, or, you know, you just have to see which one you're, you feel more comfortable in taking first, but and I'd say I that's 50, 50 with people who take P first, people who take FM. Let me share my screen just a second. Cause I would like to show, because I don't know how much obviously people know about the pathway. Um, and I'm not going to take too much time, but so this is the ASA pathway. This is the first designation you can get, which is Associate of the Society of Actuaries. As you can see, you have they have organized it in this manner, which is what makes sense to the Society of Actuaries. It doesn't mean that you have to go into the, in this order, but as you can see, financial mathematics, which is FM, and probability are the two first exams. And then you have something that is called val validation by educational experience that are classes that you take in your um, college or university. And then there is an e-learning part of this. So as I said, you can start whatever you want, but this two usually are the first ones people take. And this is what the ASA pathway looks like. And I'm gonna put this in the, uh, I'm gonna put this in the chat so that you can explore it at your own leisure. I said, thank you, Marta. Um, also, I got a note in the Q&A that the chat is disabled. So if you're trying to put questions in the chat, I suppose you won't be able to. And Mar oh, I hate Zoom sometimes. Marta, I'm going to repost yours because you only sent it to Trisha and I because that's the default for some reason on Zoom. Oh, I'm um, sorry. I didn't even look at that. Sorry. It's all, I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm talking to myself in the chat box. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay. So these next few questions I'm going to throw out. I don't know if any of us will have the answers to them. So again, I'll put my email in the chat box and you can um, send me an email and I'll get you connected to the right person. So I live in Canada and have recently registered for my first exam. I chose to schedule the exam in the U.S. as it was closer than the Canadian locations. Will that affect anything or is it the same regardless of country? It's the same regardless of country. It's, yeah, you can take it here. You can take it, you know, any country you take it, it's going to be the same exam. And it will be valued the same way. Uh, yes. Brianna, I think Brianna said at the beginning, um, the Society of Actuaries is a global organization. We have candidates literally all over the world. Um, we have close to almost 20,000 affiliate members and they're all over. We have 
some obviously in the United States, but we have some in Canada, we have some in China, we have almost a thousand in um, Africa, the continent. Yeah, I know Africa is not a country. Um, so the exams are the same and valued the same, no matter where you take them. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I already took my, am I okay? I already took my exam in May. Could I still apply for the actuarial support program for reimbursement? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, you, you can. actually, <laughs> in order for that, for that reimbursement, you have to have, um, have completed and passed the exam before you're even allowed to um, apply for it. So yes. there you go. Brianna had a, an answers from an actuary with the person who manages that program with the scholarships. So there is a recording, Brianna, correct? Yes. Where um, I'm, I think they go into more, more depth about what that ex that reimbursement program is and how to apply, where it is, and all that. And not, not that we don't want to answer the questions, but if there's more that we are not <laughs> covering here today, there is also that is a good resource to access. Yes, and that was actually we just did that one at the beginning of this month. Um, so the new actuarial exam support program is what it's called. Um, just launched May first, so it's literally brand new as of twenty two days ago. So that webinar, um, that recording, which you can also access in the digital library as part of your affiliate membership, um, should be one of the newer videos on there. Because like I said, we just recorded it three weeks ago. So yes, thank you, Marta, for bringing that up. Of course. Okay. I'm a career changer. If I would like general guidance on whether I'm currently doing the right things to get into the field and at what point um, to actually start applying for work, is this something to talk with a mentor about or is it too vague? I would say absolutely. Um, and this is why I was excited when MentorLink was even created because I've worked for the SOA for 16 years, my first nine years were in customer service and these questions would come through and, and now there's somewhere to guide, you know, candidates and potential candidates to go and you'll get mentored and ask these questions. So yes, mentor link is, that is perfect. You should definitely take advantage of using mentor link for asking those questions. Thank you. And as Trisha sure. said before, the way you choose a mentor is you can, you can pick the experience or or the certain aspects that you want so there might be another career changers in there mm -hmm. that are mentors and have gone through the same process that might be able to give you a first-hand account of how they did that that change in careers and that change in pathway so it definitely is worth exploring it we have another question from um someone who is uh, we have a couple questions from career changers actually so i'm going to group all these together first all right, so I'm considering being a career changing actuary from another STEM field engineering. At what age does this, excuse me, at what, what age does this become a prohibitively challenging, especially considering the ASA FSA credentialing process? Also, do employers tend to shy away from hiring actuary candidates past a certain age? So I have been with the Society of Actuaries for 10 years and I have seen career changers of all ages. Um, I remember some a lady who was changing from math being a math teacher um to and she was in her 50s um i think what is important is that you obviously take the exams and that um you can translate some of your experience experience that you've had into what the company that you're applying for is doing and your experience, your uh, professional experience will definitely cover some of that if you've been working in a STEM field, for sure. So there's no age limit. I mean, obviously, if you're 95 and you plan on retiring, maybe not then. But yeah, at any point in your career, you can change. I'll also say one of the earlier this year webinars was with a career changer, and she had some really great advice on this. Um, she said that she now on the other side of it, she's a hiring manager for actuaries or for the actuarial positions in her, because, oh my gosh, I cannot speak today for the positions <laughs> at her organization. And she said that age is not even a factor when she's looking at things, particularly because she herself was a career changer. And she had an, I believe she said that she 
applied for an internship and they offered her a full-time role instead of an internship. I may be misquoting that, but the video is on our digital library so I can fact check myself and you can fact check me as well. Um, so again, from many actuaries I've spoken to who are career changers, they all were very, very specific in saying that age was not prohibitive to them in getting that first role in their new career or in their new field. Okay, another career changing question. I'm in my late 20s hoping to make the career change to an actuary. Do you all know the percentage of students fresh out of college to the percentage of career changers? Marta, do you know, do you remember, or Trisha, there's a statistic about, what is it, 20% of our exam takers are career changers? So it is a not insignificant number. Go ahead, Trisha, you were going to say something. No, I was going to say that sounds exactly correct. That sounds, for my memory, the 20%, because I was shocked to hear that. That's, yeah. yes. So. Yes. And they, uh, um, so I was just working on a report and one of our largest groups is obviously career um, college students, but the second one is career changers. So it is very, very common for people to start in, you know, and, and I think in general in life, uh, it started, uh, you know, go to college for one thing and then decide that you want to do something different. So career changers are, and that is one of the reasons too, that we created the affiliate membership because we realize that those career changers, you might not have all the support that somebody in, in a university environment might have. So hopefully some of the tools that the affiliate membership offers can help you doing that change in, in, in careers, like the mentors, the mentor link or brushing up on any math classes or anything that you might need to get you there. Thank you. Okay, back to the order of the questions as they came in, friends. All right, what other technical skills other than R programming are recommended for an actuary like SQL databases or others? So I know that we are going to sound like a broken record, but uh, there are a couple of um, videos on our video library that, that address that specifically. Uh, at the top of my head, very important to know Excel. Uh, Python is also a good base to know, and then R. But um, there are there are two videos. One is shorter, and it just goes very quickly through some of the technical skills you need. And then a lot, and the other one is a little longer and more in depth. So I would definitely highly recommend one is with Bria Freed, who is a um, an actuary who has her own um, a YouTube channel with over two hundred thousand followers, I think. And um, it's called Edge Actuarial. And then the other one is with one of our SOA staff actuaries. And he goes in depth into what technical skills are best. But for sure, Excel, Python, and R are three to definitely get, get good at. Thank you. And I just dropped the link to Etched Actuarial in the chat because Bria has a lot of other amazing resources as well. Um, yes, that was the end of that sentence. Okay. Does the affiliate program help connect students who are taking exams in a session opportunity to collaborate and form study groups? We do not do that at this point, but it's something that we've thought about. And if... Um, there is enough interest, something that we definitely will consider in the future. What we do have is actual clubs. If you um, you can find actual clubs in your area if you're in, in the university. Um, we also have in-person events where you can meet other actuaries, uh, actual candidates, and you can see if you can do that, um, maybe form a group or, or uh, work with them. But as of I now... Just I just put the link to the actuarial directory um, in the chat, and that is a really great resource resource for a lot of things. Not only finding like local actuaries and local um, companies that have act that hire actuaries in your area, but you can also search for those local actuarial clubs. I don't know how many are on there, but it's one of the tabs you can select. And I know just off the top of my head just because we've recently interacted with them. I know that there's a Toronto actuarial club in Canada, and I know that there's one in Philadelphia because 
I was just talking to them. So there, these exist all over um, in all areas, whether they're city-based or region-based. And I, I should have shown you all my favorite, favorite tool uh, that I always <laughs> have to talk about. In your benefit page, there is something called SOA Explorer, and it's an interactive map. Uh, if do you think I can have a minute, Brianna, yes. to show what it? I want to show you how it looks like because it is a great tool and it shows you a lot of things. Hold on, let me let me show it to you. Okay, so this is the actuarial. Okay, this is the uh, affiliate page. If you go to Event and Networking. SOA Explorer, as I said, is an interactual, an interactive tool. And you will see, I am in Chicago, so it's going to show me Chicago, but you can put anything you want in there. And if you navigate to this, these are members in the Chicago area. If you click on this, it will become, see, it tells you the names of the members in that area. But you can also find employers. Hold on. Go back out. You can find universities. You can find actual clubs. And again, I'm sorry. It's... And Marta, while you're doing this, I believe um, SOA Explorer, you do have to be a member to access. Is that correct? No, you you have to be an affiliate member. Right. That sorry, that's what I meant. Yes. Uh, and then there's also jobs. Uh, I don't know why it's not working right now. But you can go in here and search your location. Let's see that you are in Dubai. Hold on. I don't know why it's not working. It's just the one actual club. There's jobs. It's not working today for some reason. But these are employers in the Chicago area. And as I said, you can put the location here. And then you are looking at employers in Dubai. These are all the actual employees in this area. You can see some in India. So it is. it will show you, let's say that you are in Chicago, but you want to work in Seattle. You can just put here five employers in, in Seattle or actuarial clubs or, or, um, or anything, employers, as I said. It's a it's a really great tool because it's very easy to use and it's very visual and it also gives you the contact information. So you can you can contact a member or an employer in an area and say, hey, would you have five minutes to talk to me? I would like to work in your area or in your field. And um, they might not be available, but I, I bet that you will be able to network with somebody this way. Definitely. We have had candidates in the past that... Um, use this tool to work in a different geographical area. Thank you so much. I think that's such a great resource and one that I forget about as I refer to the directory instead of Explorer. Yeah, I love Explorer. So <laughs> my favorite yeah, I, tool. I love it. <clears throat> okay, next question is how long are involved are the e-learning modules that we have as part of the affiliate membership? Mm. I am, I think that's an education question. Trisha, do you are you familiar with sorry, the e-learning e modules for the affiliate membership? Like oh. our the e-learning that we have. The oh, library. oh. <laughs> well, Is it, it depends. Something else. They're with they're pretty short. They're not very involved. They're I would say on average, most of them are, you know, less than 10 minutes long. I, I do believe some may have um, some sort of uh, quiz at the end, but they're not. They're they're pretty simple and and good, you know, 
yeah, not too involved. Thank you. Whoa, what happened? Okay. So I think this is just an overall question and I'll go ahead and take this. Do you need to educate yourself in finance? So one of the first two exams is financial mathematics. So I'm going to say yes, more than likely you will have to do that unless you have an innate working knowledge of finance and economics. <laughs> I think um, you'll probably need to spend some time educating yourself, whether that's in a class or using our e-learning library. Yeah. Okay. This one, I'm not sure. I'm just going to ask it. I'm not sure if we can answer this, though. I have an upcoming exam, and one of the textbooks required only uses one chapter. Is there anywhere, uh, is there any place to be able to find that one chapter other than purchasing the book? That is an education question. I don't know. Okay, so mm -hmm. if you... No, yeah. I'm not sure. So if you want to send me an email, I can try to connect you to the correct person. Um, that is a different department than where we work. Okay, Trisha, this question's for you. Can I register as both a mentor and a mentee? No. Well, after you become an ASA, yes, you may re register as a mentor, but anytime before that, no, you must have an, um, an SOA designation in order to be a mentor. And just to clarify, you cannot access, you cannot be an affiliate member if you are an ASA or an FSA. Our system only allows you to have one or the other memberships. So right. if you're an ASA, you can't be an affiliate member. All right. But yes, you can start as a mentee and then go and become a mentor, like Trisha said. So, yes. and we encourage all of you to do that. Absolutely. All right, everyone. So or so far, what am I saying? We have one final question. So if there are any more questions, please go ahead and get those in now. Um, Gabrielle, I've seen that you've had your hand raised. Unfortunately, I cannot bring you on to ask your question. So if you're able to get that in the Q&A box, I will read the, uh, the question. And hopefully we can answer that for you. All right. So this final question is, I want to know if the affiliate program uh, helps in securing internship opportunities for students who will be starting graduate programs in summer 2024. Um, hmm, that's an interesting question. There is not a feature in the actual, in the affiliate membership that it's designed to help anybody get an internship. But I we believe that the tools that we have available will help you prepare to, to apply and be successful in attaining a, an internship for the summer or for whenever you wanna do it. All right, we'll wait just like 30 more seconds to see if any more questions come in. Otherwise, this was a great session. Thank you all um, so much for attending. Thank you to Trisha and Marta. I really appreciate y'all. I'm just kind of running down the clock now just to see if we have any more questions because I don't want to close this in case something comes in. Um, I also, I had a request to email out all of the links in the chat today. I'm not sure if there's, I don't think there's a way to do that from us because everything is handled by Zoom. I'm not sending any emails myself. So if you would like any of these links, I suggest you open them in a browser and save them um, because I'm not able to send them out. Okay. I'm most not seeing. Of, yeah, most of what um, Brianna shared today is in either the affiliate membership page or in the soa.org page. If you go to education, a lot of the education resources will be listed there. Um, but um, also if you want, I can share my email and if anybody wants to email me and- Yeah, I would say if my email too. I mean, if you have any questions on the benefits, Marta and I, yeah, happy to help. All right, we have a final question. I'm happy to take it, but okay. Yes, okay, same questions. Um, I feel like some of y'all or one of you may have a really good answer for this. So if you do, you can take it. But um, this person is trying to decide between the SOA and CAS, specifically between PNC or property and casualty insurance or quantitative work, which would be the SOA. Do y'all have advice on that? They are both. The SOA and the CAS are both great organizations. Um, the only thing that 
I can say about that is that the SOA is a much larger organization and it gives you access to a lot of different areas in within the actuarial profession. So let's say if you start in PNC and then you decide that you don't want to do that, you want to do something else, an SOA credential will allow you to do that where what the CA is is a little more um, targeted to that PNC. And then, um, as I said, the SOA is global. So whatever you want to work, you can, you can work. We have actuaries literally everywhere. Um, but it is also, it, it depends on what you'd want to do professionally. If Brianna or Trisha, you want to add anything else? No, you, that was perfect. Yeah, we say there's no such thing as a bad actuary. So we're, we won't be mad if you choose to go <laughs> CAS. The first few exams are shared between the two organizations though. Um, so you don't have to make that decision right away. The way that I always like to put it to students when they ask is if you like working on short-term problems, so things like flood insurance, um, that's a P, that's the PNC route. So if you like a lot of different things, not the same thing continually, you might be more apt towards PNC. Or if you like working on longer things like retirement, that's the length or life insurance, that's the length of someone's you know life or career. So working on those longer term things, the SOA might be the route that you want to consider. But again, you can also be a PNC actuary with the Society of Actuaries. Yes, that's it accurate. Is, it is included into our pathway, so it's not. It, it's not like you have to choose either or to be a PNC actuary. Mm -hmm. So, SOA PNC House. So, um, there is, I believe, it's called the General Insurance Track, mm -hmm. and so it this. Is. So once you get, once you complete your ASA, you will, if you choose to continue on to get your fellowship, one of the tracks is general insurance. And some of that's changing with the FSA redesign as well. Um, mm -hmm. But if you want to, so if say you get an SOA, you, you get your associateship and then you decide, you know, 10 years down the line, I really love PNC. You can go ahead and if you haven't gotten your FSA yet, you can start your fellowship and take those, um, I don't know if courses is the right word. They just introduced a new word for it, but I can't remember the word, um, those modules and exams that relate to what either the work that you want to do or the work that you are doing. Um, also please feel free, uh, this person who keeps putting in, um, things about the SOA versus CAS thing, please feel free to email us as well. We can get you more of that information. Yeah. I am going to put in the chat a link oh, also to the Marta, hold on. Oh, Okay, Marta, you got it now, but I'm going to copy and paste Trisha and Marta's email addresses because Zoom is very annoying and doesn't send to everyone. Yeah, everyone so I put them. the FSA pathway where you can see um, all the different specialty tracks that you can, that you can do. But as me uh, Brianna mentioned, there is an FSA redesign um, taking place and um, it's not gonna change drastically, but it will change a little bit. Um, but first you have to get through the ASA anyway, so. It's... All right, awesome, everyone. I don't see any other questions. Uh, thank you, Marta and Trisha so much for you. being my thank guest you. today. And thank you so much everyone for attending. This will be available to watch as part of your affiliate membership um, in the next few days, as soon as it gets downloaded and uploaded to YouTube. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.